All right, let's talk about misinformation. And the federal government is paying consultants to use models in order to come to the conclusion that misinformation cost money and cost money and cost Canadian lives. And they're going to use this, according to Ryan, to bring forth legislation to crack down on the internet and use it for censorship, basically. And I don't think he's far off. I think he's probably bang on. Here's Ryan O'Connor. He says, the Council of Canadian Academics created a model claiming it showed that COVID-19 misinformation caused deaths. It received $54 million in federal funding since 2005. The government will now use the report it funded as academic cover for the online censorship bills. Yeah. Viva Fry responds to this. He says, how long until CTV News runs with the headline, COVID misinformation causing increase in strokes and myocarditis? Cynical jokes aside, this is the most absurd government propaganda conceivable, courtesy of state-subsidized propaganda media outlets. And yeah, I think that's all accurate. And this is from part of the report. The report now doesn't talk about the modeling or the or the methodology, which is interesting. Um, it's But here's part of the CTV News. It says, it says if these people hadn't delayed or refused vaccination, deaths and hospitalizations could have been avoided. Blame those unvaccinated people. Um, here's Roman Babber. He's responding to the same to the same propaganda piece. An assault on speech by CBC, but 6% case fatality rate was misinformation. Lockdown wor Lockdowns work was misinformation. Vaccine will lead to herd immunity and stop transmission was misinformation. Government and health spread misinformation through the mainstream media. Yes, let's find some examples of that. Here's the article. As I said, it doesn't reference the methodology. Um, Possibly the global news article does, but here's you can have your choice um, if you're interested in reading them. But I'm just providing them as as proof that the government the government finds these things, uses the media to justify it, and then moves forward as if that information is accurate. So we're in for a treat. Um, here is. Here is Safe and Effective. This is from November 3rd, 2022. And CBC is still calling um, the bivalent Omicron boosters safe and effective. Right, sure. Um, here is Frank, and he's talking about how wonderful this is that um, we have data that says misinformation is the culprit and we can crack down on that now. Good job, everyone. And Lion Advocacy says, can you please check if the myocarditis safety signals on, the, on these FDA slides is misinformation? Just a bit time sensitive given that my universities or many universities still may be requiring considering boosters for the affected cohort. Um, right, and so... All of, all of this stuff ignores these safety signals that people have been talking about for a long time and were silenced because they were smeared as misinformation. If they have laws that say we can crack down on any misinformation that we deem as misinformation, well, I mean, good luck, right? Remember this? This was October 14th, 2021, and National Post is reporting error in judgment. CBC Edmonton regrets mannequin's use in COVID-19 news reports. Oh, man, shucks. We shouldn't have used a mannequin. We should have used real people who weren't there. Huh, weird, right? Remember when the hospitals were full and overflowing and people were going to the hospitals and saying the hospitals are actually empty? What's going on? What are you talking about? Um, and that, happened, that was going on for a month or more. It was incredible, incredible all across Canada and parts of the United States too. Unbelievable. Um, here's from May 4th, 2021. Trudeau, Tam say all vaccines are safe and effective after NACI guidance caused confusion. Right. So who's who's responsible for the misinformation? You have to wonder, right? They're they're really going for this, but they're the chief spreaders of misinformation. Ezra Levent says it's been a week since this misinformation was debunked. There was no such email. He's responding to Megan Gant Grant, who says Alberta Premier's office contacted Crown Prosecution about Coots cases. Sources. The sources were bunk. And they knew it. This is misinformation. It's a smear, right? It's the media smearing a politician on behalf of another pol political party, the NDP. Um, but as it continues, there was no such email. An independent review confirms it. And yet this government journalist at the CBC state broadcaster is still broadcasting this lie. She'll probably get a raise and a promotion from Trudeau. Yeah. Do you want to come and interview Trudeau? Remember this lie, right? Cosman says, Galbo isn't the first senior member of the Liberal Party to spread false racially charged claims. In 2018, Prime Minister Trudeau spread a hoax about a Toronto girl 
who claimed an Asian man cut her hijab with scissors. Um, and here is a report on on Galbo's fake tweet, right? Or deleted tweet, not fake tweet. But uh, Galbo criticized for misinformation about California shooting in deleted tweets. So they made a whole article about this, but they didn't have a picture of the tweet. I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you kidding me, True North? This wouldn't pass my editorial desk. No, sir. Go get the tweet. Here's the tweet. Stephen Galbo in, in a deleted tweet said, sadly, hatred towards Asian people overshadowed the celebrations on Lunar New Year. Um, and this barbaric act is proof that we must remain vigilant against racism, hoping that the victims and families will be courageous in this time of grief. He came under a huge amount of Twitter fire for, for saying this because the man who, who did the shooting was himself Asian, had nothing to do with racism. He was using this as a political opportunity to push misinformation and back up their narrative. They don't care about what's real and what's fake. They just care about being able to control what you are able to consume. That's what they're interested in. So they're pushing race misinformation, medical misinformation. I lost my YouTube channel because of medical misinformation. Can you believe this? It's unbelievable. Um, I mean, it's, it's a communist takeover, so it's not unbelievable. But I'm shocked. Shocked. Uh, Tangle Foot, she, she does daily videos too, I guess. Um, and she says the 145 page report is all about misinformation. The two studies used for the models are unavailable on the government of Canada's website. That's some transparency right there. Um, oh, she's, this is also responding to Rachel Gilmore's um, uh, 2,800 deaths and 300 million in costs. This is, this is misinformation, right? Um, this is the government using models to shroud data and then using this hidden data to justify well to create news articles that then justify legislation it's a, it's like a rap smear for a law it's pretty wild so tanglefoot has uncovered the the models and the methodology if you're interested in how the information is hidden and and how they how they then shop this information around to news etc so um Check it out if you're interested. Link is in the description. Here's Eva, and she says, talking about misinformation and how the government uses information as a weapon in more than just this very direct way. This is this is a a, a very complex use of of information as a weapon in the emergencies inquiry, emergencies act invocation inquiry, the POEC. Um, the government dropped documents on the legal team 10 hours before 12 hours before so they couldn't sleep they had to review the documents right and then they were really prepared and 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 then they took miller apart they took miller apart and and so they used this information as a different kind of weapon but ultimately the poec is being used to take control of that narrative about what happened and and whitewash trudeau's responsibility in in improperly declaring an emergency and now basically the government they they didn't release the justification the legal justification for invoking the emergencies act so now the government can invoke the emergencies act and say the reason was so important and dangerous that we can't tell the public and that's okay because precedent has been set by this commission this is again information warfare on canadians by the government um Eva says, many have said that they've lost confidence in the Public Order Emergency Commission, POEC, because of how the feds behaved and how the POEC managed the inquiry. In addition to the heavily redacted and late disclosures of documents from the feds, there were two other serious issues we identified. One, the feds refused to release the legal opinion they claim justified the use of the Emergencies Act, and the POEC is giving Trudeau and his cabinet a secret report on February 6th, and Parliament and the public get the report on February 20th. Does this sound transparent to you? I encourage all Canadians to speak out about this. Tag our leaders and your MP and demand that the legal opinion used to justify invoking the Emergency uh, Emergency Act be made public and tell them that you don't agree that Trudeau should get a secret report before it's made public. Email and call too. The feds are supposed to demonstrate to Canadians that invoking the Emergency Order or the Emergency Act was justified, but how can Canadians be satisfied when critical information is hidden from the public? We deserve the truth and demand transparency and accountability from our elected officials. Lawlessness cannot be combated with more lawlessness. The truly dangerous precedent would be to allow this government to assert that it has a basis for invoking the Emergency Act when, while using solicitor-client privilege to shield it from scrutiny. If the Liberals succeed in that attempt, it clears a path for future administrations to invoke emergency measures for reasons, secret reasons of their choosing. Um, t time to pull up your socks, Canada, and put in the work. The only way we will see 
changes is if we ask for it, tag our leaders and your MPs, and call and email them too if you want answers. Um, and so, I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Um, do you think that enough pressure would be enough to derail this? I don't think so. Um, here's Justin Trudeau saying Canadians are angry with the unvaccinated in further misinformation. This is from last year, January 5th, 2022. Were you angry with the unvaccinated then? I was angry with the government then. We could, we could go back to January 5th, 2022 and see exactly what I was angry with the government about. I fear it's very similar to what I'm angry about now, but the show looks better now than it did then. So <laughs> here's Joe Biden saying, this is 13 seconds and it's a helicopter. So apologies, I'm going to turn it down. Um, I don't think it's hard to hear, but here we go. Um, he's saying that it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Really, really misinformation. Message to platforms like Facebook. They're killing people. I mean, it really, they are, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. <laughs> what's your message? The question was, what's your message to Facebook? And he said, they're killing people. The only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. 